Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Araujo and I'm here to talk about transcend migrations. Let's open the application and we're gonna get started. So we're gonna create a, our test migration here, which is from my MMC tenant to my MMC dev. It's gonna be both from Office 365 Microsoft 365, you can use end user credentials on both sides, and that's for one single migration for that specific account. And then you can use admin account, which would uh, require some ad admin uh, roles uh, within the tenant. Um, I'll have to verify which one of those, but probably exchange uh, administration and user administration at minimum. Great project. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to define the users. There's two ways. You can do it manually here, adding the user, uh, the, the name of the person, the origin uh, email address, and the destination email address. So let's put something here. And the destination. And you can see it. Uh, has now uh, agreed that this is ready. You click tab or click add user, and then you add the next user. Uh, you can also remove users and the select users. Let's, uh, so I can show you how you actually load the CSV. Let's remove the users from here. And then you have a, a sample of the CSV that you can create here. I've already created one. I'm gonna load that. And that's going to be on my migration folder. I always like to create a migration folder where I have all my migration files and log files and everything else. You can be drill this down a little bit more, create log folders and stuff. For now, I just have this for a test purpose. So now it imported and it says it's ready. You can add custom columns. Uh, those three, three uh, created here are department tile and, and region and you can add any other custom ones i'm going to leave this as a default you can also uh if you have uh, already imported the bulk and you need to filter uh for you know anything that starts with an a or anything like that or potential duplicates select users and complete users so you have a whole filtering uh, mechanism here i'm gonna click continue uh, this I'm going to call it MMC to dev. I'm going to migrate emails and I'm going to use EWS as, a, as it is the default and the best uh, option. But you can also use IMAP and IMAP will increase some of the configurations for authentication within the guest your IMAP uh, uh, service there. If you go back to EWS, it's only going to have the EWS authentication information. You have a primary domain, which is right here. And you have a primary domain for the destination. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to create an application registration for each one of the sites. So I'm going to pause a little bit so I can pull the document on how to do that. There is a very good transcend document that you can pull. So we're gonna create the authentication here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Azure. We're gonna do app registration, create a new registration, and then grab all the information we need. The information we need to place it in here is the application ID or client ID, and also the uh, application secret. This application secret, once it's created, it's going to give it to you the secret. If you do not save that secret, you're going to have to recreate and lose any other configurations that you've done with that secret before. So make sure that you put those two in a safe place. Uh, let's go ahead and, and create that application registration according to this documentation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off to another computer so I can follow it uh, in here. And their documentation is very good about the, creating this. So 
we're going to follow step by step. What you're going to do is you're going to go to the Azure portal. In there, you're going to do an app registration. And you're going to select new registration. In here, you can call it really whatever you want to call it. I'll just do transcend. origin I'm going to select account uh, in this organization directory only uh, single tenant uh, we're not going to have a redirect so I'll just create a register here all right that is created you will see the application right there and that's the client uh, application client or application ID all right so save that in the safe place this information you can actually pull it back but you cannot pull the secret back once we've done that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back here you're gonna now you're gonna go and manage certificate and secrets and you're gonna create a new client secret. This is client, client secret or transcend. Uh, you can tell it to expire and how much time you think it's gonna take your project. Uh, I'll make this a 12 months just for the heck of it. Click add. That's your secret ID. You want to copy that into a safe place. You're going to copy the value. And now you're going to create, uh, click on happy, uh, happy permissions. Under app, under happy permissions, you're going to click on add permissions and you're going to select happy my organization is, uses Office 365 and you're going to select exchange online. You're going to select application permissions and select full access as app. calendars read and write all mail read and write tasks Read and write in user read all. Click add permissions and you see the list in here of all the items that you should have. So the graph is user read, calendars read write all. Uh Full access, seems like I'm missing contacts. Calendar read and write all. Full access to exchange. So I am missing contacts. Uh, let's go back over there. For 65. Exchange online. I'm missing calendars written right all contacts. I'm missing contacts read and write. And then tasks are there. Mail tasks and user read. 
Okay. So now let's confirm again. Calendar read and write out. Contact read and write. Full access at mail read and write. Task read and write and user read. Okay, now we are complete. It's telling us to select Microsoft Graph and go all the way to files and select files read and write all you update permissions and now you grab admin consent for this and click yes as you can see the consent has been now delegated to all the required now we're going to go to the Transcend Migration Console and we're going to add the primary domain and then we're going to add the client ID and the value for the application secret. Now we're going to do the same for the other tenant. So we're gonna go back, uh, sign in with a different tenant. Oh wait. App, we'll go to app registration, new registration, uh, to send destination. Uh, just because in the picture there it was saying web, we're going to select web. Now we're going to go to certificates. We're going to create a new certificate. Press and destination cert. We're going to click add. Again, make sure you copy all the required information. This is the value. This is the secret ID both copied now you're gonna go to api api uh, permissions you're gonna add permissions i'm gonna search for office 365 and going to exchange online application permissions uh full access app calendars we need uh calendar read read and write all Contacts we need read and write. Mail uh, contacts and then mail is the next one. Uh, read and write. Tasks. Read and write. And user. Read all. Add permissions. Now we're going to click on graph. We're going to go to, uh, once we click on graph, we're going to find files. We're going to select uh, files read write all. Select that, update permissions. And now, for grant permissions. Okay. We'll go back to the app and let's just go here real quick on the overview. I want to get the application client ID that I haven't copied yet. All right, going back here. That's the application client ID. And this is the value for the certificate. All right, both copied. And now we just need to verify.
at this point, I realized that some things weren't right. Uh, so I started troubleshooting first. Uh, I wasn't sure how the primary domain, some places they consider just the first part of the domain. Other places they want the whole uh, domain. Uh, so uh, it, it's really up to each application. So I resolved that. I also resolved the name of the machine. It was uh, considering 127.0.0.1, which is, uh, you know, fine, but it wasn't really working on that way. So what I did is I actually changed the machine name or to the machine host name and that worked. After that, I was able to actually get this going. So here I go, I continue. Okay. So one of the things that I had to do is I had to change the remote machines here and I use the host name of my machine and seems like that resolved the problem. Uh, I then uh, verified uh, the origin and the destination and they both went through. So now I can move my screen down here again, my camera, and I can continue. Once I continue, you're going to see some options, uh, and those are the basic options from the software. Uh, excluded selected folders, and those are uh, pre-populated folders like calendar for United States, United States holidays. Uh, we, we really don't want to migrate that. Conversation action settings and conversation history and junk, junk email and, and some other items. Uh, you can always remove them, and you can always add additional uh, folders, let's say uh, there's a legacy folder that you used to have and uh, uh, for all the users and that legacy folder, there's no requirement for that to be moved. You can click over here uh, and add that specific folder. But uh, we're going to cancel to that. Um, then include selected folders. When you look at include selected folders, if you have an empty uh, entries here, it's going to include everything. If you want to load the CSV with the list of the folders that should be included, you can also do that. The, the only caveat on that is, uh, like for instance, myself, I have several folders that I create, uh, and just just because I want to make sure that uh, I separate my email for things that I want to save, things that I want to uh, that are informational uh, for whatever type of items, right? So uh, this will take everything. <clears throat> There's a folder mapping uh, that you can do from the origin to the destination. Also, you can make the changes here. Uh, I'm not going to change anything in there. Uh, address translation. You can customize the address translation, and that's something that I'm not going to do anything about it, but you could uh, take care of that in here. And then create separate folders for users, uh, uh, user-created calendars, contacts, and tasks. <clears throat> I'm not going to change anything, uh, so I'm going to leave at the default. You can say, um, for instance, uh, some companies that might, might say that you only save one year of, uh, of uh, emails or five years of emails or anything. You can say how much of data you want to migrate in front when and to when. Uh, migrate from online archive, and that says migrate from your UWS archive instead of the mailboxes. Archive must uh, exist. I'm not going to change anything in there. Target, allow large distribution lists. Migrate online archive. Migrate top level folder instead of the system folders. Uh, set maximum attachment, and, and other options are here. Uh, in here, you, you, I guess it's the catch-all for anything that exceeds zero limits there. Uh, those are advanced options, and when you look at that, it, it really says, oh, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, uh, you know, don't touch it, uh, contact us. If you do know what you're doing, then make changes. Here's there's proxy information, there's the duplication information, uh, and I guess they do use the duplication for the for the transfer, which is a good idea. You know, if you, if you can actually index your data and then say, hey, you know what, instead of a uh, We'll dedupe everything, and instead of uh, sending 100 gigs of data, we're going to send now 28 gigs of data because we deduped everything. So don't know much about that configuration. I'm not going to research anything about it. 
There's logging options for systems uh, that do not support calendar exceptions. This log logs the exception of the uh, specified file and event log. Date range filters, yada, yada, yada. I'm not gonna touch any of this. So we're gonna go back and then we're gonna continue. Now, the only user I have is myself. You select the user and you click continue. Uh, in my case, it's only gonna copy five uh, messages per folder because of my license. You can update your license here. You can add or update machines that will do the migration. And then uh, I already have the validation status here, so it doesn't need to validate anymore. I'm gonna select, and I think I can just continue because it's already validated. At this point, uh, I'm actually from the tenant account, I'm sending it to my dev tenant, and then I can tell it to run. And this is gonna do a trial, or I can enter the production license. Once it starts it, it gives you a view and it gives you a stop. As you see the view here, you can click on the user and I think this is a refreshable uh, option. You can look at job details and that's gonna be the job right there. And I just see some logging showing over there. We'll go back in there in a second. This is the entrance of, of what we're, we're doing. Uh, nothing here yet. The results, see, you see some uh, logging already. Um, nothing happened yet. Um, and then dependencies, there's no dependencies for this job. Uh, at the end, you can debug your report. So in here, you see it's running, it's at 13%. Uh, it started at 2023, 921 at 1710. Uh, the process ID, and that's probably the process ID on my task manager, uh, is 18580. So let's go here and man, they changed everything on, uh, on, uh, Windows 11. So 18580. That's, I go back in here, 18. 580. So you see TMCMD, that's their software. Uh, so if you need to kill it or whatever, you know what it is. Uh, and you see things are actually being processed. Uh, zero emails of 4,964. Zero migrated. Five contacts of 358. I already migrated my, my first five, so it's done. It already migrated my first event, five events, so it's done. Tasks, I don't think it's gonna find more than two tasks, so it's probably done already. Uh, one attachment migrated, uh, item rate, it was at 697 items an hour. Uh, data rate at eight megabits an hour, and now it's increased. Uh, it found 25 attachments, so it's, I see uh, uh, migrating more stuff here, so I'm not sure, this again, this is a trial. Uh, whatever it wants to migrate, I'll let it migrate. Uh, it might be that uh, it does more. Um, I don't know. But in here, you see a live output. Um, again, license status, uh, job status. It's currently executing. Uh, the machine that's executing yet, uh, the port, view configuration. That's the configuration we saw a little bit earlier. So, what's the account? Uh, that's authenticating with, that's the account that's authenticating to, uh, all the options we have, uh, there's no bundling messages, uh, we didn't configure any, um, there's more configuration that you can do about throttling, and uh, their site is very, very, very explanatory about on how to do that. Um, address translation, we didn't do anything. And so those are the items on that specific configuration. Um, it's still executing, job details. So we've tried a whole bunch of jobs, had a whole bunch of issues. Uh, so once we got the logon test going, then I was able to uh, start running on this. If you look at the specific item, uh, you have more information about it. 
for some reason it says no log exists, but uh, it's it's been logging stuff out there, so I'm not sure why. Um, so what else do I need to look in here? So far, that's all I got. Um, this is not gonna take too long, I think, because uh, even though I use this email uh, box uh, in a daily basis, uh, it's only let's say it's only two years old, uh, two or three years old, so it doesn't have a lot of data in there. The application has now gone through 91 emails. It's saying migrated 90. Uh, filter zero, skip one. The job has been successful. So it the item rate was 1,072 uh, and 21 items per hour. The data rate was 115.36 megabytes per hour. Uh, the total data was 11.09 megabytes. Uh, in this case, um, I don't know why it's showing my Gmail. Uh, oh, that's because I had migrated the Gmail to my previous uh, account. So, so therefore, it, it, it did pick up some of the Gmail. Uh, there's the there's some archive items. There's some uh, uh, inbox items. There's some save items. Uh, there's some other additional items, but in the total, it was uh, 91 uh, emails, five contacts, uh, five events, and two tasks. 89 attachments in total. Um, but that's it. Uh, you could go and, and look at forecast, um, which you could look at the results here. The results will give you the exact things that happen. Um, and what else? Um, that's it. We can look at now at the options after you have some items in there. So once you have some kind of migration that already happened or some kind of uh, project that you already has inserted, then you have additional options. Like for instance, you can uh, look at new, create a new project, manage projects. You're gonna see the project that we just created. You can delete it, you can select it to go back and work on it. Uh, you can manage the projects actually I've been there. You can remove a project and that's the project project you're actually on it will remove it uh, you can set configurations for it you can clone it you can edit it uh, and edit it is the options right there that you had before maybe you change the client id or anything like that you can do that in here um, what else uh, there's the jobs those are the jobs you had you see successful job and then you pull all the information there. That's the same rule that we've looked before. Before we had, uh, I had the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, uh, value for the ID here. So therefore, it had a bad, a bad username. Uh, I tested the host, which I changed to the new host, which is AAVPC. Uh, there's a logon test here. That logon test went through. Uh, without a problem, as you can see, uh, you can do the, the, the debug report again. Um, next thing in this list is the job monitor. As they're going through, you can see what's going on. Uh, and those are all the jobs that I've already tested and ran. Um, also, you can look at address translation. I didn't have any, but you could always add the address translation here. I'm going to cancel that. Uh, you can load the CSV for it. Folder mapping, same thing. You could add a folder mapping here. You see at the end, uh, do what's coming from and what's going to. Um, additional, uh, there is notifications. You can add any notifications that you want, source and target, and you can uh, click on the load CSV also. A lot of this stuff that you can script to create your CSVs and then you can import the CSVs here. That's all I got. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.